well, hello and welcome back to the, <coughs> excuse me, to the DC United Kingdom podcast. This is season three and this is episode 20 and I am your host, James Graham. As you'll see, I've only got one person alongside me. Uh, unfortunately, Tom is unable to make it, but we still have Daniel Wise. Welcome back to the show. How are you doing? I, I'm doing all right. You know, uh, as, as I was saying before the show, uh, Tom sent a message to us saying uh, there there are some fires going on and we got to put them out. And I was like, that instantly registered with me because that's a very DC thing. Um, at any given point during the day, uh, things can just happen. And I, I know that feeling all too well. And especially yep. the fact that like he's probably going to be, well, you know, done and dusted with things at like probably eight nine at night somewhere around there well, yeah when a fight when a fire starts it kind of it kind of rages for a while so um you know uh best of, best of luck to you tom that's that's uh that's a tough one but uh yeah. yeah no i'm i'm super happy to be here and uh you know especially after the game last night where oh. Gola Kamara uh, came out uh, and, and just absolutely um, gave us a show. Uh, oh, he was awesome. You know, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, I don't know what it said. Uh, I'd like to know the ratio at which, you know, he's, he's scoring sort of um, outfield, you know, goals compared to penalty goals uh, because gosh, like that's, uh, you know, uh, that's been kind of a, a theme is like, uh We've had some penalties go our mm-hmm. way, which I will say kind of in years past, uh, that's that's always been um, a bugbear for this team is is just having no leeway when it comes to getting penalties awarded. Mm. And um, I will say that, like, it's it's good to see that. Uh, and, and man, um, kind, of, kind, of, kind of I wouldn't say it's a clean hat trick, kind of a dirty hat trick considering both of those were pens, but uh, no, you know, uh, fantastic to, to see uh, Kamara coming out there. Um, but yeah, how about you? How are you feeling after that? Oh, I'm absolutely stoked because it was just such a nice performance. And yes, the second half we didn't score, but it was a case of just game management rather than going out to win 6-7-0. We, we don't necessarily need to do that. And... Yeah, we shop shop a little bit. Um, we did what we needed to do. The ref wasn't particularly too great, I thought, especially when you're getting three yellow cards in the first twelve minutes. But we'll move. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but yeah, the game was fantastic. Yes, it was a bit of a late one for me because uh, it was a half twelve kickoff. Um, but you know, I was away. I was. If you saw the picture that I sent out on Twitter, it was a little bit different to my usual setup. I here. Um, I was in a hotel room with uh, very poor Wi-Fi, so I was tethering from my phone on 4G. Oh, that was! I had to restart the stream a few times during that game. Oh, and you, you, you said you were in Coventry, right? I was in Coventry. Yes. How, how, so what's the size of, of that sort of town over there? Oh, uh, I mean, it's a city. <laughs> okay. Uh, um. Population wise, that's a very good question. Let's have a quick quick look. Because you know Google is our great friend. Population of Coventry is three hundred and twenty six thousand okay. people. That's not bad. Yeah. I mean let's I, just compare it to Washington DC. About half that size. Which is uh six hundred and ninety two thousand. Yeah. So and Coventry is not really classed as a big city for us. No, it's just one of those. It's near Birmingham. Okay, yeah, that's uh, yeah, because uh, Birmingham, I don't know whether you know, it is classed as our sort of second city behind London. And oh, Birmingham, I did not know that. There you go. Uh, which has got a population of one point one four nine million. See, that's the hilarious thing. I, you know, I. <laughs> Outside of London, my my context of England is mm. like every single town outside or or c- even city outside of London is yep. like a little idyllic uh, English, you know, cottage town type of thing. 
Because I mean, that's what all you see in the movies is like, <laughs> if you're not in London, you're at this town where like everyone's 70 years old. So, You've watched Hot Fuzz too many times. Have... <laughs> that's that's a fact. Yes, that is. I mean, that's a great comedy. But yes. yes. Um, oh, Angus thinks he would have said it was it would have been Manchester as our second second uh, second city, but no, it's Birmingham, the dreary ta- dreary city of Birmingham, yeah. um, which is uh, where Peaky Blinders is set. Mm. I think I've never. I think I've watched the first episode about three times because I just can't get into it. But you know, that's a show that sat on my watch list for probably three or four years or however long yeah. that's been running. So yeah, okay, yes. yeah. There you go. Anyway, uh, football because you know yes. that's what we're here for. Um, first things first. Score prediction update. In terms of the points difference, there's no change. We all. We all win up. Yeah. We all we all we all chose a win for this one, so we just didn't get the scoreline right. So I'm on nine, you're on fifteen, and, I, and Tom's on six. So same difference at the moment. Add me and Tom together, we're equal with you. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, yeah. if, if that's the way you want to play it, at the no, end, no, no, no. I mean, that's not how we're playing it. But master here, yes. Um, <laughs> trying to do anything to get out of wearing this Metro oh. jar- Stars jersey. Any, anything for you know the british to get back at the colonies i get it i get it you got a little bit of a chip on your shoulder you know i i understand but you know at the end of the at the end of the year i'll be i'll be sitting here getting a nice frame uh of you wearing that Met- metro stars jersey i'm i'm so looking forward to that um, i mean i mean the, our, our delivery service is absolutely shocking over here yeah. <laughs> yeah it might take a little bit might, might have to get that picture like next year or something um, i mean it will be at some point just yes. not saying when well i mean i i should stop talking because yes. I, it very well could go another way and i could be sporting that spurs jersey you could um, be yes but you know the the way I'm gonna the way I'm gonna feel better about this is it's gonna be a Sun jersey because you know he's a player I I deeply respect. He's yep. kind of he's he's a golden retriever player, uh, kind of like N'Golo Conte, where like you can't. I hate Chelsea. I can't hate Conte. So like that's yeah. that's how I feel. You know, yep. if I do get a Spurs jersey, it's gonna be a Sun jersey, and you know it, it'll be it'll be my mow the lawn uh kit so mm. you know that way it just gets sweaty and dirty and so like i'm disrespecting it at the same time yep no, that's, so, fair. <laughs> that's yeah. my plan with it um but no uh yeah no th- it, this um this is gonna be a really crazy finish to the season um yes huge crit- if- i mean we've got 10 games left haven't we 10 games left and you know um you know, if we if we get more performances like what we saw against Philly and what we saw against Chicago, um, this very well, you know, it's funny you were talking about sort of like, you know, is it time to start dreaming about the playoffs? Uh, I, I think I think we're sort of a little bit past dreaming of the playoffs. I think um, for what it's worth, the teams that are bad have continued mm. to be bad, and then the teams that are good um, have have only kept rising to the top. Uh, yeah. as as macho man famously said the cream rises to the top yeah. and i think just in this stretch right here you're going to be seeing more of that you know the the uh, metro stars will continue falling dc will continue rising and, yeah. and it's going to be fun um I mean, it's, it's been beautiful seeing that downfall oh f- absolutely oh. and and um you know it, it is uh you know through the fact that like yeah not having um bwp to worry about is yeah. uh fantastic um yeah. but yeah you know that that's that's you know down the line um but you know uh i i, I am eager to talk about this uh atlanta <laughs> game coming up but you yes. know right now i think with this uh chicago game um you know we're i'm super eager to talk about that as well yeah absolutely but before we actually do any match stuff we've obviously got yeah. to talk about news because uh the first thing that uh is up on there which is um a rapper called yo gotti 
Um, yes. As invested in DC United, so now we're valued at $730 million, um, which is what I thought we were at before after the Mark Ingram invested, but, you know, uh, we'll see. Uh, I'd have to go back and check on that, but, uh, yeah, we're valued at that. Uh, Daniel, you gave me the honor of uh, playing uh, Yo Yo Gotti. Sorry, I had to his, get the name his right. His summer uh, banger, Bra, yeah. featuring yeah. the baby. Um, um, no, yeah, you you made. I'm a- not a fan. <laughs> I was over here. I was. I was. You were. You were rocking it. And by the way, um, you've had a, you've had a comment on uh, YouTube directed to, for you saying. Uh, you're looking fresh. So Keenan oh. has just said you are looking fresh. Well, and, and that's the thing is is uh, prior to the show, I, I told James that I'm coming in ready for business because I know he's going to give me the business based on, you know, just just the uh, incredible rise that Kamara has had. And, you know, how he's, you know, very much like, oh, I always <laughs> believed him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I, always, did, yeah. I was I was Gola Kamara before Gola Kamara. <laughs> it was Gola Kamara. I was Gola Kamara and, before he was even born. Exactly. And so I'm I'm here to set some records straight <laughs> multiple times because uh you know rewind to those early months of the season. Uh. Um this team was absolutely not on the page that they are right now. Um no. and and you know, it's pretty incredible that that really uh, and, and I mean, you even look at how he did last season. Now, obviously, being that it was the coronavirus season, yeah. um, you know, everyone had kind of a nightmare experience with that. But man, um, he's he's completely turned it around. And, uh, you know, as I've as I've said, you know, I, I apologize for it. I have I have publicly apologized. I have set, you know my tone correctly now you know i i recognize that hey you know he he is clearly um he's making his money now for sure uh and and that's that's good to see um yeah yeah, but no it was it was uh i had to come in with with a little armor today (laughs) five thousand percent yes (laughs) yeah that was i mean I don't think anyone could have predicted that we Ola Kamara would have been the leading scorer at this point yeah. in the season with 16 goals. It's just wow. Insane. Yeah. Absolutely and with 10, wow. 10 games to go. <clears throat> yeah. Um I mean, we could be looking at like a Zlatan <laughs> figure uh at the end. Whoa, of whoa, the whoa, whoa, come on. I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I know he's Gola Kamara, but but I mean, you know, I, we're talking, you know, goals per minutes or, or you know, how, uh, how you know, yeah. with with 10 games left. I mean, man, you could you could easily see another 10 goals minimum uh, yeah. if 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 he keeps this pace. Uh, and, and speaking of pace, like, you know, uh, they have a big one, that, you know, this weekend. Uh, Huge game. Atlanta is going to be bringing some firepower. Like, man, have they switched it on uh, the past couple of weeks? So, you know, like yeah. I said, eager to talk about that. But uh, yeah, no, I'm. I, hey, I'm. I'm on there with you. I'm. I'm on the hype train, and it was yes. really good seeing him this weekend or, or last night. Yeah, it's just fantastic. Um, just a little stat that's just come through on the chat, which is he's already beaten uh, Rossi's total from last year, which is great. Wow. So that's that's very very cool. Uh, just move it on to more. Oh, uh, just another comment. Just before I do move on, looking at our points per game compared to last year is crazy. Kamara is contributing so much to that. I mean, yeah, we're on one point four two points a game at the moment. And if I just load up uh, last year, uh, we were on point nine one. Right. Yeah. I was. Yeah. I was just thinking that we were at like. I was almost going to say, like, we were at, like, 0.8 something. Yeah. But, yeah, no. Half a point crazy. extra per game is a huge difference. So, yeah. uh, fair play to uh, Lasada for bringing, bringing his uh, philosophy over and uh, giving us Lasada ball. Um, but, yes, yeah, so we're currently fifth in the Eastern Conference right now. Um, one point outside of the home playoff games, which is great. 
Um, but we've got to bear in mind that NYCFC have got a game in hand on us. Mm-hmm. Um, so they could potentially move to four points clear, which is would be then tied with Orlando. But if we look down below, um, just over our shoulders, um, we're tied on points with uh, Montreal um, with the same amount of games played. Uh, Atlanta are one point behind us as well. Um, but creeping up behind those two is Miami and Philadelphia, who are just outside the playoffs, and they do have a game in hand. So they could actually, both of them, jump back above us. That would then put us back to seventh. It's yeah. it's going to be a tight finish to this season. Um, and you look at Columbus, who've had a fall from grace. They started pretty decently. Um, they were there in just behind New England Revolution. They were in the top four for quite a while, and now they're down in 10th in the Eastern. They've literally got to that 30-point mark and went, nah, that'll do. And just went, nah, we'll just lose everything else now. Uh, the Metro Stars, they are then seven points difference between 10th and 11th. Mm-hmm. It's a huge gap. So anything below 10th for me is out of the playoff race now. Yeah. Yes, mathematically they can still do it, but that is a huge gap when you think they've got 10 points to make up to get to the playoff line. It's such a huge gap. Yeah. Um, if we just have a quick logo over at the Eastern, uh, sorry, the Western Conference, just the surprise packages in there for me is, um, well, at the start of the season, it was LAFC, but they're now starting to uh, come good. A bit like how Atlanta were doing. Right. Kansas, I wasn't expecting them to be at the top of the Western. But then you just ha- usually have like Seattle, who are in second, so they're doing very well. Colorado. What the hell? They're in third. <laughs> yeah, I no, um it's- What? <laughs> been a a very silly season um yeah it, you know uh that's that's sort of the wonderful thing about uh mls and and i think you know one reason why a, a lot of um you know british people are are kind of turning to it is is that it is a more uh exciting league because yeah. you know you have these opportunities uh for teams to kind of like battle back up the table uh yeah. whereas you know you watch the epl and you know things things are usually set in stone same thing if you're if you're looking at the uh you know uh bundesliga or syria or anything like that you know things are pretty much set or or predictable from season to season um but no not here and and no. that's that's really good to see yeah, uh, that's that's where you kind of like turn it into like uh, EPL 1.5, where you kind of cut off like the top six teams and you see you you kind of look at the mid table and, and kind of uh, watch those battles play out. Yeah, uh, it's, it's truly one of the reasons why I do love watching this league is the fact that you don't you have a couple of teams who generally will do well, mm-hmm. but they're never guaranteed to win. And that's what I love is the fact that it is different every year i mean you look at as i just mentioned about columbus being in 10th they're the reigning champions yeah it's just what and you look at toronto a few years ago they won mls cup they're sitting rock bottom right now um it's just it's bizarre this league even new jersey you know where where they're at right now i mean they have won that supporter shield and They usually are a playoff side, but yes. they're, if you look at the supporter shield table at the moment, they're in 22nd. Yeah. And you've got Toronto and Austin FC uh, rocking up the bottom there, carrying everyone. You know, they're going to have strong backs down there. Yeah. Um, Cincinnati, who were traditionally down there at the moment, but they've started to pick up a little bit. They've uh, finally won their first home game. Yeah. And then you got you got to see a newcomer like uh, Nashville sitting yeah. second on the East. Yeah. Um, that's, they're doing great. That's a dream start if if you really kind of think about it. Like you yeah. know, uh, well we'll have to well, and then on you know sort of the opposite side, you have uh, Inter Miami. You yeah. know, last year kind of being uh, toast of the league. You know, with with how they started, and then suddenly uh, they've had a tremendous 
uh, fall from grace. And uh, there was a really good article in the athletic uh, sort of a uh, postmortem of, of, you know, how this, this failure to launch has, has really affected uh, the team because uh, for the most part, they, they were focused on launching a brand rather than a team um so really yeah that's a really good story right there yeah but then you look at that recent form they're True. doing the business they're, at the moment yeah, they neville, are doing neville's figured out figured out the code he has they've won their last three games <laughs> one nil yeah <laughs> so no, they've, they, they've they, kept clean sheets well you know it's it's neville uh he's he's watching uh the the lester tapes from that 2016 uh, yeah. season he's like you know that hey maybe, maybe we can do we, that we could we park the bus and we we hope for a, a wayward goal to to put us up we, yeah. we can we can do something here yeah i mean to be, <laughs> let's i will give credit where it's due they've not yeah. conceded in the last four games that's impressive that is that that is very impressive so we'll give them some credit there for once because you know they've been linked to everyone they've got about 27 dps on their roster you know, it's into Miami. Anyway, back to DC. Yeah. Um, today, I am. It's obviously been things like um, voting for Player of the Week, Team of the Week, all that jazz. Um, they were announced. So, uh, Gola Kamara and uh, Bill Hamid made Team of the Week. Obviously, Gola Kamara was in the starting eleven. Uh, Bill Hamid unfortunately missed out, and he was uh, riding the pine. I thought yeah. I, I got the term right there, didn't I? Yes. Riding the pine. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Um, or as we we know it over here, sat on the bench. Um, but uh, Gola Kamara, I think we need to give him a little round of applause because he was player of the week. So, hey, give him, a, well, give him well, that. Yeah. Uh, so fair play for him. He, he deserved that after a first half hat trick. Um, I think I saw a stat pop up when I was watching the stream last night that he is now, or it might be in a tweet. He's scoring a goal every 63 minutes. Yeah. It's just, it's wrong. <laughs> it's great. It's, it's... I, whatever, uh, yeah, whatever he's, he's doing, like it's, it's working out uh, tremendously. And um, I, I'll say, you know, what led to that second goal. I think this is really good. Uh, you know, uh, some props I want to give to Kevin Paredes, but yes. like, the, the lead up to that was kind of like a completely different thing uh, from, from what we've typically seen from him before. So he's, he's for sure, uh, you know, figured out some gamesmanship, uh, yes. you know, playing anyway. in this, in this league. So, yeah. Um, but no, do we have any other news to get to? Uh, yes, uh, we have yeah. one more piece. Uh, Jeremy Garay has been called up to the El Salvador national team, ready for the friendly Audi field. So, fair, well done for him. It's uh, he got picked up his first cap recently. So, I would be very surprised if he doesn't get another cap, especially when it's on his home turf. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really happy to see him because he signs his first pro contract with the club earlier this year. Yeah. It seems to be 2021 is a very good year for him so far. Yeah. So there you go. And that's it for the news. Um, I don't think there's anything. I haven't missed anything that I didn't write down, have I? No, but, you no. know, uh, I don't know. I, I guess uh, shout. I, I kind of want to give out a, a shout out um, kind of unrelated to MLS. But, you know, just uh, for Emma being our Belgian uh, yes. correspondent in the supporters group. Uh, Club Bruges uh holding oh PSG, wow uh yes. that is um wild so yeah good yes. good on them um, there was a couple up. of surprise results in the champions league you had young boys beating man united yeah yeah <laughs> oh, oh i'm God. sorry to all you uh man united fans out there but yeah. that did tickle me quite a lot um sure. angus corrected me on uh kamara's goals uh Minutes per goals, it was 64, not 63. Oh, wow. I was one minute out. <laughs> he'll, he'll score That's another an extra goal trick. a year. Yeah, he'll score another hat trick this weekend, and, and we'll make yeah. that right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Let's uh, move on to the game from last night then. So, as yeah. always, we'll I'll do a quick 
uh, rundown of the stats. So um, obviously it was that three nil. Um, possession wise, we had forty six point nine percent to uh, Chicago's fifty three point one. Yeah. So it's, it seems to be becoming a little thing that we're starting to have less of the ball now, um, rather than keeping the ball and having all of that. Uh, shots, we only had seven, which surprised me to uh, Chicago's 13. We had three on target, so we scored every single attempt on goal. Um, to Chicago's once, and Bill was only tested actually once. Um, he only had to make one save. Offsides, we had five um, to Chicago's three. I don't remember us being offside that much, but there you go. Uh, fouls, eight to 11. And then expected goals, we had 2.2 to uh, Chicago's 1.7. And that's the bit I want to touch on is the expected goals bit uh, because of those two Lukas Dianovic's uh chances that he had in the yes. first half I think that's what's pushed that right up because that first one where he puts it just wide it was as I said before we um, started the show my heart skipped a beat when that happened because it looked dead on for that for that goal not not the best night um, overall well you know just in terms of just kind of being rock solid and, and that's that's sort of what I'm judging from here uh, for the back line. Um, you know, it was it was commented on in the supporter group because uh, it was pretty obvious, like Donovan Pines, um, whatever it is, you know, just was not um, sort of 100 percent, you know, kind of kind of on uh, his mark that night. Yeah. Um, th- that st- that first Stojanovic uh, shot uh was it was a clear indication that um he just made a, a very nice like timing run uh ball was kind of going off uh towards towards the corner flag and um it was one of those uh sort of really shallow crosses that uh found his foot and yep. you know what whether, whether you know just the angle wasn't right or something um it should have been a out and out goal uh yep. it was so clean the way he made that run and just I, you know, he barely had uh, anyone within. I wouldn't even think he had anyone within three yards of him. No, so I don't think no there was one, no one tracking him. No, uh, and like I said, it was. It just was. It seemed like one of those easy timing runs that like uh, just about anyone can make. And so, uh, yeah, no, it was. It was really tight, uh, kind of in those those first minutes. Um, but yeah, like you said, that that second shot was yes. was really crucial. So yeah. you want to kind of describe that. Yeah, so similar. I mean, the bit that I remember because obviously it was very early in the morning was the the dive that uh, Bill made. So he was diving to his right hand side, um, mm-hmm. but he was able to save it with his feet. Um, yeah. That I love those kind of saves because it's just like, <laughs> but yeah, it just it looks quite nice when you're diving that way and you just stick your foot out and you're still able to make that save because it's just such a lovely thing to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, again, Stojanovic had the the opportunity to really change the game there. Yeah. Because that was, what, at 1-0. And yeah. if that had gone in, that's obviously 1-1. Completely changed the outlook of the game. Thankfully, it didn't. And we had Bill Hamid in goal because I think if we had any other keeper... Not just Kemper, but any other keeper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that no, would that, have been, was... that would have been one one. Well, so you asked me before the show, you know, do you think Bill has, you know, do, do things kind of slow down around him? And yes. I would say yes. There's there's to a degree like that's that's a fact. But I think what also helps being kind of a, a big bodied Lincoln Continental of a player, <laughs> like you were saying. <laughs> Can He's be diving Bill. one way, but then but then sticks out his foot uh, for for that save. Yes, to a degree, like there are reflexes involved, but like yeah, he's he's just a big man. And like uh, earlier this week, I, I uh, posted a picture uh, of myself and Bill. Uh, yes, and he he makes me look like he's my or I'm his son. So it's he's <laughs> just a very big man, and so. Uh, no, uh, it's just, uh, he brings kind of that intangible, uh, just presence, um, 
that that really helps uh in his ability and so yeah. uh yeah no uh it's it's he was sorely missed and to have him come back and keep a clean sheet like that uh is, yes. is just so good to see yeah i think everyone's mood was uh uplifted when it was announced that he was in the starting lineup it was just like yes we actually have a chance of a clean sheet not yeah. not to knock Kemp in, in any way, shape, or form, but he struggled in goal for us. Um, he's not quite up to the level that we need yeah. as a backup, even. Um, I'm surprised he was able to stay in goal for so long. I thought Chris Seitz would have. I mean, that's come sort in. of a that sort of that says a lot about Chris Seitz than anything. Um, because, uh, God, just going back to um when they had that friendly away at uh i think they were what in the u.s virgin islands um yes yeah yeah and and he let an absolute howler get past him really it was, it was one yeah it was one of those it should have been so simple um and and he let it go go past and you know he's just never anytime he's been between the sticks i can't I can't remember anything good ever happening with him. So, you know, I, I always feel bad, you know, kind of knocking uh, uh, players like that, but no, it's a fact. And like, um, if, if, you know, it just says a lot being that crit or uh, that uh, Kempen was, was the best option that we had uh, yeah. is, is there, there are some things that need to be addressed because, you know, Bill won't be here forever. Uh, so we got we got to figure something out. We got to yeah. find our we got to find our uh, our, our Chesney. Next bill. That's what oh. we need. Yeah, oh Chesney. <laughs> yeah, Chesney. Yeah, jeez. But you know, I got no. I got to sneak some Gunner stuff no. in there. No, no. He only became good when he left the Gunners. <laughs> the true, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Stu has just uh, piped up in the comments. Uh, whatever Lasada is feeding uh, Gola Kamara, he wants some. And I can tell you what he's feeding them. It's things that don't have any legs. That is yeah. the Lasada diet. It's the less legs it has, the better. It is. Because, you know, Griffin came on and said that that was, uh, that was um, an interesting uh, interview, that one. Mm -hmm. um, finding out what their diet and regime is all about. Beans. Fish. Fish is Legumes. good. Yeah, just... I'm, I'm always down for legumes. Those are, yeah. No, those are... <laughs> Those are great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a couple of other things about the Chicago game before we kind of move on to this weekend's fixture. Um, what did you make of our actual lineup? Because I mentioned, obviously, everyone's mood was uplifted when we saw Bill. But yes. for me, this was our strongest lineup this year. Um, uh, yeah. I, I, you look at it like this is, um, I think if you were lining all this up in, in FIFA, this would be, uh, all the players you would want on the field. Uh, mm. And, and yeah, I think it just showed it um, just in those, those first 45 minutes, just how solid uh, at, you know, I, or, you know, for most of the time the team looked uh, yeah. was, was great. And yeah, considering, yeah, they, they put up three, they, they got the shutout or clean sheet. Uh, it, it, it's um, <laughs> just great seeing that. So, uh yeah i like i said if if this is the way things are for the rest of the season we don't have to worry about injuries you know heaven forbid anything ever happens yeah. to our boy uh paredes um that would yeah uh i think i think uh you know uh this this team's lining up for for a playoff push uh if everything stays healthy um i, th I think they're they're gonna be looking really solid yeah i think that the only thing that um, would have made that lineup potentially stronger as if uh, Flores was in there. But to be honest, I was thinking, who would I take out? Um, yeah. The only other one would be Heinz Eich. We did, yeah. I think we are missing him, and I would have him replaced with uh, Pines. The way Pines has played in the last couple of games, I just think he needs minutes in, potentially yeah. in a Loudon jersey just so he's back to fitness because yeah. he's missed quite a lot of game time because yeah. he's had that injury. And yeah, Heinz Eich is just one of those players who's 
able to go forward. He's able to. He's got a decent pass on him. He's actually yeah. got a very good pass on him. And to have someone like him on one side, Nahar on the other, yeah. and then Birnbaum just sweeping up just behind. To, to be honest, though, I mean, well, you know, for what it's worth, uh, you know, we have to talk about Reyna and Moreno yeah. and, and how much yeah, yeah. Uh, they have come on in, in recent games. And, and to be honest, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about how, you know, um, uh, you know, I can't, I can't imagine how, you know, we kind of replace those guys because they yeah. have really hit their form. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the um, the whole Moreno bit is come on. Since that first international break. Yeah. When he came back from that, it, it just looked like a completely different player. I was expecting him to be a little bit um, fatigued after the travel and things like that, but he just came straight back in found his feet and has just not looked back. And then yeah. Rainer, since he's got his first goal, he, his he's, confidence he's has just rocketed. That, he's got a bit of that uh, Gola, Kamara, I, whatever is happening, like that's rubbing off on him yeah. uh, in terms of, of his goal scoring threat. So yeah, I mean, to, to be honest, like, yeah, uh, as much as the team or, you know, it was kind of lauded for Flores and Assad coming onto the team, yeah. Um, man, you know, they, they haven't done a lot to show, um, you know, them being on form more than Moreno or, uh, Reyna. So yeah, yeah. we're, we're, you know, <laughs> I don't know if they've done, done it to themselves or if it's just, you know, that's just the way life is. And, you know, uh, these players have gotten hot while these ones haven't, um, you know, that's that's not a bad problem to have. No, I was going to say, it's a great problem to have when you've got players who are jostling for this position who will want to get in the lineup, like Yamil Asad Flores at the moment, who's, uh, who started on the bench at the last night, where you've got Reyna and you've got Ariola um, playing in behind Kamara. It's just that this is such a great problem to have right now because you've got... Yeah. We've got this depth in the roster, which is yeah. something we've cried out for for God knows how many years now. And now we've got it, and it's just like, great. We've got selection headaches. It means lazada has got choices. He can rotate. Um, he can... I mean, we'll talk about this at the weekend uh, in a moment, but when you've got to think about playing on different types of surfaces as well, yeah, that's something. And when you've got pe- players who've got sometimes... a a slightly dodgy knee or something like that, then you can rotate around and you're not really going to miss out on the quality because we've got that decent depth and players who are wanting to get into that lineup and should be showing what they're all about and potentially keeping that place for the next game. So for me, I'm really happy with the depth that we've got. Yeah. Um, and just one, Karen. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, kind of before we, we move on, you know, I kind of alluded to it earlier, uh, you know, Paredes, uh, you know, we've been singing his praises a, a ton, uh, mm. and, you know, pretty much half the season, or I would say even the whole season. Yes. Uh, what I saw last night from him is now he's having fun. Uh, yeah. He is, um, he's, he's coming to his own so fast and, uh, you know, sort of one of the things I picked on was that um, he was a player who, you know, he he tried too hard all the time to make things happen. And yeah. last night you saw when that uh, penalty happened, uh, it was him the, on the, the second penalty. Um, it was him doing a little bit, you know, kind of kind of little Ronaldinho, you know, kind of dancing, getting around uh, in the box a bit. And, uh, you know he he you know the the defender who was on him kind of clipped his shin it was one of those things where like maybe a few games earlier he would have tried to disregard that and kept something you know going with it yeah. but he took he took the shot he knew right there he was like okay he didn't get the ball he got me i'm going down and yep. he and we got the penalty so you know by him doing less we got more out of it and that is um kind of a a mental wherewithal that i was talking about earlier 
that he is now, you know, coming into and, and now, yeah, he, he's getting it. And man, uh, the upside of, of him is incredible. And I'm going to, I'm going to miss him next year, but it's going to be fun seeing where he ends up yeah. over in Europe. That's just reminded me about that penalty is um, someone that replied to one of my um, tweets that we had the second penalty and we scored it. Um, a Chicago fire fan. <laughs> <laughs> and he just went, and he just, I said about the legend Kevin Paredes winning the penalty. He went, yeah, and he flopped like a f- fish. <laughs> I, hey, I, you know, if you're gonna get, if you're gonna lunge in, yeah, on on someone who's it's got so quick feet, yes, it's gonna happen. You're gonna eat that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And that's, that's just that's just what it is. Uh, yeah. Defenders have to be better than that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, hey. Hey, be mad. We love it. Yeah. <laughs> We're here all day for it. Hell yeah. Um, w- <laughs> one last point I want to uh, just raise about the Chicago game was how... I mean, it was the opening section to the game about the refereeing because we yeah. had three yellow cards in the first 12 minutes, which I was just like... When I saw that, when Pines got booked, I was like, hang on. That's a third yellow. And I looked at the right. time. It was, like, it was like 11 minutes and 35 seconds or something daft like that. And I was like, what is he just, what, what's the ref trying to accomplish here by booking that many people, those, that many players yeah. that early doors. He's, it's just, he's asking for someone those, to have been sent off, but he didn't. Yeah. One of those may have legitimately been a yellow card. I want to say it was that one that happened along the touchline where, I mean, it was a Chicago player who came in uh, mm. and absolutely body checked. Uh, I think maybe it was Pines or or something, kind of along that side. Um, yeah. That was definitely uh, a call right there. But for sure, like there were so many, uh, or he, maybe it was Reina. I, I forget. But um, yeah, there were just some some wild, uh, yeah, you know, sort of calls that that really, you know. You have to you have to let them play, especially at the start of the game. Yes, you should not be giving yellow cards uh, that early. No, the only the only way you would give a yellow card is if you are wanting to put your stamp on it and just say, "Look, this is the level we're going for." If you go any further, then we'll talk about it. But three in the space of 10, 12 minutes was a lot, and then there was that Gressel booking yeah. that I took. I mean, what he did. That was a booking. I'm not knocking the fact that Gressel got booked, but it's the fact that the Chicago player who shoved Gressel into the hoarding mm-hmm. deliberately had didn't get anything. There was no there was no reciprocation on him. There was just no discipline. It was just it for that's the bit that frustrated me. Like I said, Gressel getting booked. Yeah, I, I'm not going to argue that one. That's absolutely fine. He shouldn't have retaliated. Yeah. And you can see why he was angry, but yeah, the Chicago player should have been uh, booked for that one, in my opinion. True, but. and yeah, I don't know. Uh, you're always going to have that with with different refs. Uh, some of them are just going to be a little more liberal with the bookings than others. Um, you yeah. know, uh, it's it, it is what it is. But yeah. you know, that, that it's it's one of those things where like, hey, we came out with the win, and uh, you know. That's all that matters, really. Yeah, 100%. Yep. Right. Let's have a little look ahead to the game this weekend, then. So yeah. we've got the Atlanta United uh, over at the Mercedes Benz Stadium with that rotating roof, which I am so jealous of because it looks <laughs> flipping fantastic. Yes. Um, but that's kicking off on Saturday, um, 3 38 p.m. Eastern Time, which means it's an 8 30 p.m kickoff for me it's an actual evening game a proper evening game for me which means uh central european time that'll be a 9 38 p.m kickoff um and i'm thinking obviously about emma for that one um over in brazil it'll be a 4 38 p.m kickoff and for you daniel that's gonna be a 2 38 p.m kickoff hey, see I love it. i'm thinking about all the time zones <laughs> over here i'm thinking about everyone um but yeah, it's um, it's a great time for everyone to really tune in. It's a Saturday afternoon. 
what a game we're going to have. So a mm-hmm. couple of points about it. I mean, the first one is obviously they've got Joseph Martinez back on form. Um, recently breaking the record for the most goals in the first 100 MLS games. Yeah. And I think, what was it, 85, 86 goals? Something like, yeah, he's, he's it's completely just... demolished it. Yeah. Oh, that's, uh, but say, I don't think he's actually done terribly well against us. Okay, well, from what I, mean... I remember, I think we've always been able to keep him quiet. There's been a couple of times when he scored a, a game or two, but um, yes. In the um, Benny days, for sure, um, you know, and, and that's because, you know, he, he kind of approached that where, you know, in that in that way, we for sure locked them, locked them down. Um, yeah. But, you know, uh, God, they've been on such a tear, uh, you know, picking up 12 out of uh, 15 points um in yep. their recent games and uh yep. they are looking really scary i mean especially with barco on the other side like he is uh you know he got one against uh cincinnati and i mean man for nothing against cincy so I mean, I, hey i you know if anything like we got we got three on chicago they got four on cincy um yep. And and that was that was kind of an anger game right there for them. So yes. uh, they they are um, they're looking for blood, and I think to a degree like DC is as well. And man, it's going to be a shootout. And I I hope we can come away with the win. But like again, I come back to the fact that like it is so hard to win on the road. Yeah. And uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium uh, just has one of those atmospheres that's that's really tough to get into, uh, and and you know they they get a good showing from the fans and uh, yeah this this team I think I think they're angry they you know they had kind of some difficulties early in the season but they've kind of they kind of shed that skin and they are uh, kind of they're steamrolling forward to be honest so. Yep. I don't know. I am I am going back and forth in my head. Uh and and none of the situations involve a win, to be completely honest. Oh, we're back. Uh, we're, Daniel's back. I and and you know, it's just one of those things where like, yeah, Atlanta is looking so dangerous right now. And yep. I don't think Bill's gonna maintain a, a clean sheet in this one, as good as he yep. is. Uh I, I unless our back line figures something out uh i just i just don't see them stopping uh m- much of this so huh, i it, it pains me to say it but i don't think they'll come away with a win um i think it's going to be a 3-2 thriller down in atlanta uh i i am giving atlanta the edge in this one oh. i hate to say it i hate to say it but they have they they have been so uh just absolutely consistent and and completely yeah. dominant in the in the past games uh that they've had uh you know they had they had that slip up against nashville uh but no i mean ugh, it's gonna be tough so i i'm i'm hoping we can win if i drop points this week i won't yeah. be mad about it yeah. but i i truly think uh it's gonna be just too much Oh, Daniel, Daniel, uh. Daniel. <laughs> I knew he would have to come back to that at some point. I knew you were going to come back to uh, us getting beat again. Um, I forgot about, um, and you know, I was talking about the time zones. I forgot about Turkey. Um, nice. It will be a 10.38 p.m. kickoff for uh, Turkey. Ooh. So... That's not bad either. So hopefully you'll be able to uh, stay up and get, watch that one uh, with nice, us. So. Get a nice big mug of Mesut Ozil's uh, coffee. Yeah. Just just knock that back up like an hour before the game. You'll be you'll be set till like four in the morning. So yes. yeah, you'll be good. Absolutely. Um, it's nice to see the uh, chat uh, going off on the uh, YouTube. It's just been it's great to see. Um, I mean, there's there's talk about the obviously the Cincy game going on, mm-hmm. and how about there was the six changes that they made, so there was quite a few. Um, it wasn't their strongest lineup. It yeah. was very weak, and 
yeah, they had. I don't think they had their number one keeper in there. Obviously, they were missing uh, Lucio Acosta. Um, yeah. So obviously, their their captain and their main one of their main DPs as well. So key players. Obviously, Brenner was playing, but if you haven't got your main support in the line there, then you're just not going to get the goals. But for me, um, hmm, it's a tricky one because yeah, oh, their, their recent form has been decent. Uh, they only got beat to Nashville. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think this one through. And I'm thinking because it's Astro, so it's fake grass, not... not, not Right, not, yep. What you guys call tough, which is what, obviously not what we call it, it but it's, there we it's go. It's between a real, you know, it's soccer that 40, stadium 40 and, pitches. and NYCFC's uh, yeah. pitch. Yeah, it's it's, a, it's kind of in that middle ground. Yeah, it's a, it's it's got those little those black plastic balls, which yep. when you slide on it, you're gonna get a burn on it. Yes. Um. So what we we call those four G pitches, um, uh, they don't quite give you coronavirus, but you know, you you, you definitely want a tetanus <laughs> shot after that one. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't know whether you heard the. Uh, I mean, I don't know whether we we'll get uh, sensitive to this, but the uh, whole five G gives you coronavirus conspiracy theory. Oh my god. Yes. Disgraceful. Anyway, um, I'm not going to go down that road. This is why I tweeted the other day, you know, when when I come on to Twitter, I just want to see, you know, good, clean soccer fun. That's what I'm into. That's the only reason why I'm there. And then there's that little what's happening box. And it's like, no, I, I could have gone a whole lifetime without knowing that was happening. No thanks. No thank you on that one. Twitter. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> oh dear. Right. Um my prediction for this one. Oh. Because of the because it's fake grass. Um uh-huh. I I'm not sure whether Andy will play or not. Mm, mm-hmm. Because he's generally been rested for these games. So I'm not sure whether he'll be a star or not. So if I was going to pick the lineup, it would be Hamid and Goal. Yep. You'd have Birnbaum in there. You'd have Pines and Alfaro. If mm-hmm. I'm thinking that with that logic. Yep. Um, Gressel and Paredes. Yep. On the wings. And then, uh, to be honest, the rest picks itself. Canals, Moreno, Ariola, Reina, Kamara. I yeah. think that's that. I think that's how the lineup would, barring anything happening in the next twenty four hours, um, I think that's what. Oh, um, Andy is playing this weekend. Okay then. I've said this wow. just. Um, it's it was said in his uh, press conference today. I've just been notified. So, so I'll scrap that. Andy playing. Uh, we're gonna win. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I don't think we'll keep a clean sheet. I'm I'm going to go for a sneaky two one. Okay. Um, I think Gola Kamara continues his uh, hype train. He uh, choo choos down to the Mercedes Benz, and um, yeah, I think it's going to be two one. I think Martinez will score. It will be him or Barco, because Barco yeah. has looked very very good. And um, and that's why that's why you know I I, I balk a little bit. You thinking. That we're gonna, you know, keep them to one because, man, I, you know, look, we got Bill. Just, hey, Bill's fantastic, but it is, um, I we gotta see something tighter from that back line for sure. Oh yeah, um, it's it's they have to be, you know, five thousand percent on their game, uh, for this one because, yeah, yeah. for sure, you know, we're we're gonna be. And this is kind of going back to what I was thinking or talking about before, where, you know, teams that have that speed absolutely kills us Uh, because there are times where we can overload a side and all they got to do is look out for that one moment where, you know, one player just gets drifts a little too close to the ball and then they just make that long cross. And, And for, you know, Barco is going to be just just fiending for that. So, in that sense, then, do we play where we keep 
two defenders at the back rather than allowing two defenders to push up just to cover almost, that? I, I would say you almost have to do that. Um, because if you, if you try to do that where, you know, yeah, you bring those, um, you know, backs up into that forward area. Oh, that's going to be a bad, yeah. bad time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so for me, yeah, if we can do that and the, when you look at it, you've got Pines is actually quite pacey. Yeah, for sure. Um, Nahar's got a lot of pace. Yep. So we, we could cover on that side of things, but, um, it's it's going to be a great game. I think yeah. it's going to be end to end. Like I said, it's going to be a thriller. Like yeah. this is um, one you tune into. If if you have someone who is on the fence or you know has never really watched a major league soccer game, this is absolutely it right here. Yeah, a hundred percent. Annoyingly, it's on uh, pay TV for us over in the UK. It is, which is so annoying. So it kind of narrows the accessibility just a little bit yeah. um it's on uh, premier sports 2 um so if you did want to watch it if you're over here in the uk you will need to uh, subscribe to it it is 10 quid for a month um but then you do get access to all the stuff that goes on there which is you've got loads of mls action on there so yeah. and that's including their free to air tv as well so you've got that it's yeah. it's actually a really good i did use that quite a lot a couple of years ago um, when when we had Rooney for that full season there was yeah. only two games that weren't on TV throughout the entire oh year. no that was it so it was for me to try and watch those games it was an absolute dream you, you at least got to see him clown on Orlando right oh yeah I mean oh yeah absolutely okay great yeah yeah it was just <laughs> It just goes hand in hand with that. But yeah, it was just... Lucho Acosta, all <sighs> three foot five of him, jumps 10 feet into the air and heads the ball past into the back of the net, leaves a flaming hole in the back. Oh, <laughs> what? You had, you had Rooney over in Columbia Heights just launching that thing on a laser. It was amazing. This is it was it's my, it's my tall tale that I'll always expand. At a certain point, I'm going to say, you know, Rooney was over in Los Angeles, and and, yeah. and Lucho was basically an ant. So, but no, that that one of the all time th- greatest plays right there. I had I had Rooney was in London. <laughs> he, he crossed it from across the pond. That's yeah. how good it was. Yeah. Oh, he man. he ran across water. He is Jesus. Yes. <laughs> oh i'm not gonna go down that road that's yeah. yes um tom has finally made it oh man tom you're a bit late we're almost finished here mate <laughs> what's your score tom what yeah you what think? what what is your score prediction actually let's um whilst we're just ch- chit-chatting here put your score predictions in the chat let's see some score predictions come yeah. through for this weekend i know it's early doors but Get who's them in with, there. Who's with me? Who's who's uh, ballsy enough to say DC's going to yes. lose this? Yes. Who's who? Who in their right mind would say we get? But who's who's with me? Who's with me saying we're going to win? Is it going to be the Gola Kamara hype train, or is it going to be a Daniel defeat? Which one is it in? Uh, just let's have a little look through all the comments. Uh, Tom's just said favorite thing about uh, of that Acosta play is Acosta tripped one of their runners. I know, I saw. <laughs> yeah. That was the whole VAR piece, wasn't it? Yes. Right, Tom, you said two nil. Is that a win or a defeat? Uh, we've got Angus um, saying three one for a DC. Wow. Okay. I like the com- confidence. Um. Kevin Hernandez uh, said um, 2-1 to the Real United. <laughs> I like it. Yep. Uh, Tom doesn't think he could ever predict a DC loss. I think he did earlier on in the year, didn't he? I think we did. We got him. To, I think there was one. I think he did. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. I'm fairly sure about um, that. Victor um, has said a 6-0 Real United win. Wow. I mean, Man, I'll, okay, hey. I'll take that. Um, Keenan, uh, hang on. Whereabouts on the West Coast are you, Keenan? Um, 
Actually, is that Pacific time? Yep. Right. Okay. So if it's two o'clock, if it's two o'clock for me, yeah, it would be noon for him. So it's a twelve thirty-eight. Uh, twelve thirty. Yeah. There yep. you go, Keenan. We have covered. I think now. Most yeah, most yeah. timelines. That's at it. least, at least that we have representing in in the yes. uh, Rainbow Coalition that is the DC United or DC UK DC UK supporters group. Exactly. Cool. Right. Let's wrap things up because uh, we're, we've come to a lovely end, as I always like. I don't know why I always say lovely end. Maybe it's because I'm English. It's um, always a lovely end. It is always a lovely end. Uh, do... <laughs> Tom's going to lie. He would never predict a loss. Pull the receipts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, we, have, we, have, we have the episodes, so. Yeah, I, I mean, I've got a good, I've, I've got a spreadsheet. Got to always have a spreadsheet for these things. Um, right. So coming to an end, if you're still, um, if you're listening to this after the fact or you're watching this after the fact and you're still here, thank you. It's absolutely awesome that you tuned in for this. Um, for those who are watching live, thank you for watching live. Thank you for the chat. It's been absolutely awesome seeing all of these messages coming through. Absolutely love it. It always keeps us going and keeps the hype up. I absolutely adore it. Um, if you're not a member of DC UK, do come and join us. Um, there is a link in the description, but if you do want it, it's dcunitedkingdom.com forward slash membership. Um, come and join us. It is absolutely brilliant. Uh, the support group chat is always off the chain mm -hmm. every single match day, even during the week when there's no games on. There's always something there. Come and join us. There's people from all over, as we've mentioned, Brazil, Belgium, Turkey, UK, and America, and I believe there's people from all over the world who aren't in the Twitter group, so yeah, come and join us um, and if you want some merch, like this lovely flag um, I know Tom's got one, he's got the big, big one I mean, that's big but he's got a big one yeah, he does I mean, that sounds rude, sorry Tom um, there's, all, there's pint glasses, there's socks there's hats there's t-shirts like not with this logo. this is the og logo um not the new and improved logo um but yeah going on there have a look again link is in the description um if you could give this video a like and if you're not subscribed to the channel please do that as well um daniel um where can people find you on social media Find me at S Dakota Soccer on both Twitter and Instagram. Uh, like I said, you know, uh, for the most part, uh, you know, usually uh, on for for a game day. That's that's usually uh, when you can find me in the chat. Um, otherwise, you know, I'll, I I I poke in from time to time. Uh, my job is in social media, so uh, outside of work, I try to keep it uh, to to somewhat of a minimum. But um, no, yeah, no, I I love uh, you know talking about it so yeah yeah absolutely. Stop it up. definitely oh what was it uh come for the gifts stay for the memes St oh no no uh is it is it is it oh man no what was my what was my tagline for that uh <laughs> come for the biscuits stay for stay for the chutney I <laughs> chutney what <laughs> let's pick a lily Come on, if we go in English, <laughs> pick a lily. Fair enough. <laughs> I had some of that last night. Oh, yeah. Oh, for my starter with my uh, work meal, that was um, strong. Yeah. Um, and Tom, before I do my last bit, I will not tattoo logos on people for 50 bucks. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, once again, thank you for tuning in or listening in. Um, always a pleasure to be able to do this uh, for you guys out there. Um, if you want to follow me on anything and you're not already um, at DC United Kingdom on Twitter, at DC United Kingdom FC on Facebook and Instagram. Um, like I say, come and join us in the um, in the supporters group. Just head over to DCUnitedKingdom.com forward slash membership. Um, so yeah, that is it. That is for, for this week. Um, let's bring on the three points um, from Atlanta. Let's uh, celebrate that win again from last night. And let's enjoy these last 10 games of the season. Because, you know, we're heading to the playoffs. We're going to make a lovely playoff run. And bring home that MLS Cup. It's going to happen. Come on, Daniel. Say it with me. Yeah. Hey. It's coming home. It's coming home. It's coming home. Um, so, yes. Um, 
hopefully we'll be back again next week for another episode. Um, so until next time, vamos United. Vamos United, prove me wrong, 